Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about white balance. It's something that I adjust on every single photo and probably in every single video that I've ever shared. I'm kind of play around, uh, play around with it, just trying to make my photos look, of course, the way I want my photos to look. Uh, but there's some interesting things you can do with white balance and there's some things that you may want to know about it. So this is a very beginner friendly guide and uh, I'm just going to dive into white balance and talk about how it works and how to get the most out of it. Let's get going. Uh, I've got a photo here which has a lot of different colors in it, which is uh, on purpose. And the white balance in this photo is actually not off, but I'm going to use it as an example of how to adjust white balance and the three different ways you can do that. Now, there's some things to think about before you take the photo, which is you, you do have white balance settings in your camera. I'm sure you know that. I personally shoot raw files and I shoot an auto white balance every single time. It doesn't mean it's the right thing to do for everybody, but for me and the subject matter that I shoot, which is cityscapes like this or landscapes, I don't care about uh, adjusting white balance in the field. I prefer to do auto white balance. Usually it's pretty close, like in this example, but it's easy enough, as you'll see in this video, to change it if you need to. Now, if you're an event or a portrait photographer, wedding photographer, things like that, you very well might need to set the white balance in camera and not use auto white balance. I'm just pointing out I use auto white balance and that's why. Now, the thing with white balance is you're essentially trying to, uh, it's kind of like color correction where you're taking, if there's a color tint to a photo, you're basically trying to add the opposite color in order to kind of correct that. And what you want to do is have the whites uh, in the photo appear white like they do in real life. And so here's a good example of that where the colors actually look really good, but the whole thing that I talked about with opposite colors is a big deal. And I want to talk about that for a second. And so if you look at this kind of color wheel, it points out the opposite colors. So blue is across from yellow. So if they're across from each other, they're opposite colors. Green's across from magenta. So they're opposite and red and cyan are opposite. So something to keep in mind. Now, when you shoot raw files here in uh, develop raw, you'll have develop raw if it's a raw file or it'll just say develop if it's not. But if it's a raw file, you, you, when you come here into the color section in develop raw, you'll have three different options. It is different with a non-raw file. So if you have a JPEG or a TIFF, uh, there's a slight difference. I'm going to point that out. Uh, the first way to adjust white balance on a raw file is this drop down menu. You can see it says as shot and the temperature and tint have a number here that corresponds to how the photo is captured. This drop down menu, you can come through and click on these and you'll notice as you click on these, of course the look of the photo changes, but also notice the temperature and tint numbers have adjusted themselves, right? So some of these will get them uh, get the photo warmer and then of course some of them will get the photo cooler, like tungsten is going to make it really blue. Fluorescent makes this one blue as well and flash is actually pretty pretty close to being uh, uh, what I would call accurate. So that's the first way is this drop down. But again, remember, if it's not a raw file, it'll only say as shot. You won't have that opportunity or option. Uh, the second way, and this is the way that I always do it, just simply because it's years and years and years of habit, is just moving the temperature and tent sliders. Uh, now you'll notice here, uh, it's a really large number, 4791. As you go to the left, uh, obviously it makes it cooler, but the number gets smaller to down to 2000. And on the right, it gets really warm. It goes to 50,000. You can always double click to reset. Um, these numbers, they're not on the usual one to hundred kind of scale. And that's because these are in uh, Kelvin. Uh, and so it's a measurement of the uh, a temperature, if you will, of the light. And so um, these are degrees Kelvin on a raw file. On a JPEG, it'll be a regular like one to hundred, or I can't remember, negative 100 to positive 100, something like that. But uh, anyway, that's the difference for the number. Tint is always going to be tint and will uh, remain like in the, I think it's negative 150, yeah, to positive 150 on that. So uh, double click to reset and it goes back to the way the photo started. So this is uh, what I normally do. I'll just come in and I'll adjust temperature to my liking, right? Warmer or cooler. In this case, maybe a little cooler and maybe I'll take the tint slightly right. And you can kind of see how this is creating a little bit different mood in the photo versus how it was shot. There, a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer. And here, a little bit cooler, a little bit darker. So it creates a little bit uh, of a feeling of a little bit earlier time in the day. This is a sunrise in Rotenburg, Germany. Uh, so nice photo, pretty evenly lit. Uh, everything's fine there. And now with a little bit of creative use of white balance, you can kind of create a different overall feeling to the photo. So let me reset that. And there's a third way that I want to talk about. And this is the one where it gets a little bit technical. And that's how I think of white balance. It can be a technical thing, which is I want to um, 
correct the colors and fix the whites, that sort of thing, in my image. That's kind of the technical. And then the creative, of course, is I want to add mood or feeling to my image, which is kind of like what I just did a moment ago, moving the temperature and tint sliders. But like I said, there's three ways. This third way is this eyedropper. And all you do is you click on the eyedropper and you come over here and you just hover over different areas. And I'll put it up here in the sky uh, just so it's easier to see. But you'll see there's a little grid. All the pixels uh, in, the, in the grid are about the same color because the sky is pretty evenly colored. And you'll notice at the bottom there's an R, a G, and a B with a number. Those represent the red, the green, and the blue. And the numbers are the relative values or amounts of each of those colors in the pixels that I'm hovering over. So red's 143, green's 156, but blue is 208. So there's a lot more blue, in other words, you know, duh, right? It's the sky. But there's a lot more blue in that area. And so if I tell Luminar that that is a target neutral, it's going to say, oh, well, if that's neutral, then I need to go the opposite way, right? This is where I talked earlier about how you're kind of adding the opposite color to kind of counteract any color cast. And so remember, if it's heavily blue, the opposite is yellow. So if I click this and say, hey, that blue is a target neutral, which means that should be kind of a neutral color, well, it's going to warm it up a lot because it's going away from the blue and toward the yellow. And so that comes into play no matter what color you hover over. And the greater the difference between some of those numbers, the greater the change you're going to see. So let's pick another one. If I come over here to something that's a lot more yellow, right? This says the red value 201, the green value 184, and the blue value 134. So a lot more red, but you know, some green as well and not much blue. But if I go with that as my target neutral, because it's a heavy yellow, it's going to go back the other way, right? To make things a bit more blue to say, oh, well, if that's neutral, then I need to make everything else a bluer. And so that's really how it works. And so it's really just kind of a game, for lack of a better word, of bouncing around and finding colors that you might think are target neutrals, right? So in this case, I would come over here and I'm going to pick that uh, bit of pixels on that window sill or window frame. And you can see here, the numbers are pretty equal, right? Red 148, green and blue are both 150. So that actually is a target neutral. And so when I click on that, because there's a minor difference between those uh, numbers, you will see my temperature and tint, which were at 4791 and 10 in the original as shot raw file. When I click that and say it's neutral, you'll notice very, very minor, almost indistinguishable change in the photo. And you will notice the temperature and tint slightly adjusted. So that really is a target neutral. And again, you can tell that it's a target neutral because those numbers were pretty equal. They're essentially just about the same numbers. And so that's a good indication that you do have a true target neutral. Now, as I said, also the difference in the values can uh, make it a, a difference in terms of the look of the white balance adjustments that are made. So if there's one color that's really far ahead in terms of the overall numbers in the RGB values, really far beyond the other numbers, then you're going to get a whole lot of the opposite of that color when you click it. But here's an example where if I pick a target neutral, I'm kind of in this pink area on this uh, wall on this building. Red is 90, but green's 83 and blue's 86. And so the numbers are smaller, but also they're really close together, 90, 83, and 86. And so even though 90, which is red, is the highest, the opposite of red, of course, if you remember, is the cyan, right? And so if you look at that, you might think, oh, red's highest. I'm going to get a cyan look. But the numbers are so close that the overall change is not that significant. And so it does create a little bit more of a blue look, but it's not that massive, massive blue uh, adjustment that happened when I'm over here, like in something that's really red with a significant amount of red relative to the other colors. So the overall balance, if you will, of the colors and the relative values comes into play in terms of how white balance is adjusted in the photo. And so that's kind of a high level, maybe not that high level, kind of a deeper dive, maybe uh, perhaps, um, on white balance and how it works and how you can use it to your advantage. Again, for me, the simplest thing is just moving the temperature and tint sliders. And I do it for creative effect, right? Just to kind of create a mood in my photo where I might, might want something a little bit like that. And, uh, you know, it's quick and easy to do. Also note that you can also click this area and come in here and make that adjustment and then come in and say, well, but I want a little bit more magenta. So you can use those in combination. And you can also use these settings here like cloudy. I can use that, but then I can say, well, I want it a little bit cooler and a little bit more tint. And so you can use those 
uh, in combination. And anytime you do that, if you pick a setting here and then make adjustments to it, you'll notice that it defaults to the word custom there instead of one of the kind of preset looks. So lots of power and flexibility, but the bottom line is you can either color correct in order to remove a color cast that exists in your photo that maybe you don't want there, or for me, uh, from a more creative point of view, is it allows me to kind of begin creating the mood that I want to create in my photos by adjusting the temperature and tint quickly and easily, which I do every time I'm in Develop Raw. Now, that doesn't mean that's the final look of the photo for me because I go through usually quite a few steps with masks and different tools and a lot of color uh, implementations in different places in the photo and things like that that will help create that overall mood. But for me, kind of the getting started is, for me, I use temperature and tint sliders, get myself started, kind of launch off into a certain direction editing. That's how I go about doing it. Hope it gives you some ideas about how white balance works, how you can use it to apply creative effects. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.